Messy data science code. I often hear people complaining about messy data science code. They say that 88% of the data science projects don't go in production. And so I claim that the solution is better data science primitives. So what do we mean by, by data science? Often it's dreams of uh, business process automation with things like fraud detection or better pricing. And this typically boils down to machine learning on business data. And so let's, let's dig in the work of a, a data scientist to understand a bit the challenges. And, and bear with me, I'm going to do a bit of uh, coding. And uh, I'll start by, by uh, doing it the, the modern way, so I'll just uh, fire uh, Copilot and just ask it to uh, do the analysis. So I'm, I'm telling Copilot that I have an employee's uh, CSV uh, file and I want uh, Copilot to build a predictive model that predicts the salary column as a function of the others. And uh, today it's been fast, by the way, we're, we're lucky. So I'm going to accept the code and I will check that it doesn't uh, delete my files or something like this before running it. Well, it doesn't seem to do it, so I'll, I'll run it. Wow, it's running. We're very lucky today. Uh, the code is running uh, straight out of the box from, from, from Copilot. It uh, doesn't always happen. Uh, oh, you know what? I forgot to add uh, parallel computing, so it's going to take a while. I, I broke the rule that you should never accept um, generated code without uh, uh, checking it well. All right, well, while it's running, I can try to do the same with a, a bit more manual. So, you know, I need to uh, import uh, uh, pandas, uh, so I'm still using code completion, right? So read the, read the data. Uh, what does the data look like? Looks like this. So I have the column I'm interested in to predict. I've got lots of other information and I'm going to need to apply a machine learning model to this. And well, I'm going to have to kind of transform a bit all those columns because the machine learning model isn't going to work well with them. So well, uh, first what I can do is I can uh, uh, separate uh, 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 out the features uh, from the target. So the features that I call X is what I'm going to try to predict from, and it's everything but the column called salary, and the, the, the target uh, Y is what I try to, to predict. And then I'm going to um, uh, split uh, uh, out a uh, uh, test set. Uh, so I'm, I'm splitting out a, a, a test set, so I'm separating the data in train and, and test, as we always do in machine learning. Um, and then, well, I'm going to need to transform all those text features, text columns, into, uh, into something that I can feed in my machine learning model. Uh, so, uh, okay. So I'm using pandas.getdummy. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and then I can, uh, I can uh, train uh, not a linear regression model. I can train a random forest regressor. Uh, and this time I will not forget to uh, activate parallel computing. Uh, and then I can, I can fit uh, uh, on, on the data. Okay? Um, and uh, uh, then I can evaluate uh, the model on the test set. Uh, I just want the R2 score on the test set. Uh, and so I'll predict on, on, on the, te the test set, and I'll uh, test uh, uh, the R2 score. Uh, and bang, what happened? Uh, well, if we, if we dig through this, it's telling me it's got column names it doesn't understand. Or are you able to see what I did wrong? Anybody? All right, let's go back to Copilot. So surprisingly, Copilot got it completely right. It, it doesn't always do it. it. 
But, but the, the devil is in the detail, and I'll, I'll explain you a bit what, what happened here. Uh, so doing, doing things reasonably right, we get a, an R2 score of uh, uh, 0.84. Uh, okay, so we had fun. What's difficult? Well, really what's difficult is the, the data munging, the data preparation that I must do to uh, actually you know, feed the data in, in the learner. And the, the, the core problem is that the, the data science problem depends on the data set. So it's really hard to build reusable blocks. So this data munging ends up being different each time. And the work is interactive because we need to understand the data. And so we, we work iteratively. And this, you know, this iterative work with non-reusable blocks ends up in spaghetti code. And importantly, I mean, they, 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 they work, but what you've seen is that they often fail when we apply the model to new data. And applying the models to new data is absolutely crucial for two reasons. One is if I want to use them in production, I will need to do that. Second, from a data science perspective, I cannot validate the model on already seen data, it's, it's meaningless. So what, what we do, what you've uh, just uh, seen me uh, do, is that we uh, split the, the data in train and test. So you know, we are gonna randomly, uh, arbitrarily take, a, take out a, a, a test data, and then we measure the error on this arbitrary choice. This is a limiting factor, because this test set is only partially representative of the data that, that we would get. And so a better way of, uh, of doing it, which we don't do much uh, uh, these days, is called cross-validation. Is when you, you, you take your full data set, you, you split multiple test sets out, and you repeatedly uh, train the model and test it. And when you do this, you need to repeatedly split the data and replay the data preparation. And one of my experiences is that people often do this just because it's... It's tedious to replay this, this, this data munging. So we're back always to the same thing, is that this, this data munging is, is a liability. One of the reasons it's challenging is that we don't think of it, but it, it has implicit fits in the sense that it adapts in some way to the data. So for instance, think about the categorical encoding that we did. So we called pandas.getDummies, and what it does is that, for instance, consider the city uh, column. What it does is that it's going to uh, create one column per city and then uh, code uh, whether the line is, uh, uh, has this city or not. So one hot encoding, it's nice and good. What happens when we get new data with an unseen city? How do we represent it? If we rerun uh, uh, pandas get dummies, it's just going to create a new column. Uh, but then how do we align this new column with the old one? Are we certain that we get the columns in the same order? So we can't do what I did, which is to uh, apply get dummies on the train set and on the test set. That's, that's really bad. Okay, so uh, in, in machine learning with, with scikit-learn, we have uh, the one-hot encoder uh, object that does these things, and really what it does is it separates the fit, which is figuring out which categories are in, in the data, and the transform, which is uh, transforming the data. So this separation of fit and transform is also important in, in data preparation. And I just want to stress that AI coding does not save us, so I, I was lucky or unlucky, it worked this time. Uh, my experience of running this, uh, this example many, many times is that it typically fails. Well, I say it worked, but it didn't turn on parallel computing, and I wanted parallel computing. And we need to understand the code it generated. If we didn't understand the code it generated, anyhow, even if it runs, we have a liability. And typically, it generates fairly complicated code. So, let me introduce you to Scrub. Scrub is a, a software package that really focuses on building better data science primitives for tables. And let me try to actually 
run a bit of code to show you how it works. So it's the same code as before. In the beginning, I'm, I'm splitting out the, the target and uh, the feature and the target variable, and then I will uh, build a, a pipeline for uh, combining scrub table vectorizer and a random forest regressor. All right, so if I do typos, I wrote table vectorizing, then it will not work. So I import the table vectorizer, I import the random forest regressor, I make a pipeline. So okay, here I'm, I'm spitting the, the, the data in train and test. And I create a pipeline that chains the table vectorizer and the random forest regressor. And here I will be careful to turn on parallel computing. <laughs> OK? And the point being, now, the really important point is now my pipeline does the data processing. I no longer need to do code that separates out data processing uh, uh, and fitting. It's all joined in the same code. And, and by the way, for reasons I don't want to cover today, uh, I get an R2 score of uh, .9, which is, which is better, because my preprocessing code is, is better. So really, you know, the table vectorizer is a bunch of heuristics that apply you know, clever preprocessing for, for multiple columns. And it really it separates fit and transform, and it gives me really good, good default baselines. And I can have more sophisticated uh, uh, feature engineering. I can, uh, so Scrub gives me all kind of tools to do, uh, for instance, select a bunch of columns. Here I'm selecting all the string columns but the department column. And then I'm applying uh, an LLM that I download from uh, a hugging face to uh, encode uh, all those text columns. And then I'm remerging everything. And then I can apply machine learning uh, uh, on this. And if you run this, it does all this uh, for you, doing all the, the download and the, uh, and the transformation for you. And you can put this in a, in a pipeline, and you can, you can cross-validate it. OK. So you just need pipelines and combine them, you know, Scrub and machine learning, whether it's scikit-learn, Keras, or, or you name it, and, and we're done, right? Well, the, the experience shows that users don't really like scikit-learn so pipelines, because they want simple actions on data where they can see the immediate modifications. You saw how I work. I work in a very interactive way. I build my transformations as I go. And Pandas is way more expressive than, uh, than scikit-learn pipelines. But Pandas code cannot be put in production, because it cannot be by itself reapplied to new data without having things that change. It cannot be tuned. Thing is, a real analysis doesn't fit in a scikit-learn pipeline. A real analysis is typically going to start from multiple tables, for instance, a product table and a basket for a table. And in these multiple tables, I'm going, for instance, to need to transform different tables. I might need to aggregate my product table to summarize all the products in a given basket, and then merge it, doing a join to the throw table. And only then do I have a feature table that, on which I can apply a, a machine learning pipeline. And so the, the way this is done is via pandas or polars or SQL code with things like group buys, aggregates, merge. This doesn't fit in a scikit-learn pipeline. And so let me introduce you Scrub Data Ops. So with Scrub's Data Ops, what you do is that you're going to take the pandas code that you typically write, except that in the beginning, you're going to define variables. So I'm going to define a products variable that is just the, the, the data frame I'm just wrapping in a certain way. I'm going to label it as this is my x, this is the features I want to predict from, this is my y, this is my target, and then I'm rerunning the same exact code. 
almost. And there's the apply at, at the end. What's the benefit? The benefit is that Scrum has built a computational graph in the background by tracking everything you do. And with this computational graph, then I can reapply all these transformations to new data. And the reason why I had a, a, an apply is that when I, I call skb.apply, it knows to separate out the fit and the transform. So it knows whether uh, I'm running in fit or I'm, I'm running in transform. And so here I can, out of this pipeline, I can now build a learner, a learner that readily can predict from the multiple tables of interest. So it's not a scikit learn learner or a standard machine learning learner because it knows how to assemble data across multiple tables. Now, I needed to do aggregations in my earlier example, and I, I, you know, I made a choice. I think I used a mean, but it's somewhat of an arbitrary choice. I don't know what's the most relevant aggregation. Is it the number of products account? Is it the max value of the basket uh, of the product in a basket to do fraud detection? Is it the mean value? So what I can do is I can just modify a tiny bit my code to add scrub that choose from and put multiple choices. And then at the end, I'm going to ask Scrub to make a grid search, and it will try all these things. It will run cross-validation, and it can display the predictive performances. And so what you're seeing here, if you read this graph, is that mean aggregation gives the best prediction performance. Max is almost as good as and count. It doesn't work really well. So I'm not going to cover all the details of Scrub, but that's, that's the ID. Scrub gives us better data science primitives. It unites the world of machine learning and the worlds of data frames. It gives us things like the transformers that, that can do all this, this data managing, separating fit and transform, but also the data ops that can work in an arbitrary data assembly, including anything, Polars, IBIS, DuckDB. It just wraps what, what is done, but it can replay it and it can tune it. Before I end, I want to talk about something completely different. There's another problem in, in data science, which is the validation of what we do. And that's one of the reasons why the, the projects don't go in, in production. So we have another project, not as mature, but already available, that we call SCORE, that allows you to track all the experiments that, that you're doing iteratively as you like to work, with helpers that allow you to do better evaluations. You saw that my evaluation code was sometimes a bit um, a clunky, where I needed to compute many different metrics. And you can store all these things. And then you can summarize all these evaluations, for instance, uh, with a plot like the one I'm, I'm showing you. So we're busy building great open source machine learning. So there's a, a scikit-learn and all the other toolkits that you know and, and you love. We're creating new things, Scrub, Score. This is done by uh, uh, Inria and Probable, where I work. So Inria, French, mostly French taxpayer money. Uh, and a lot of uh, open source communities. And so really, if we go back to the problem of the beginning, the problem of messy data science code, my view is that the way forward is using better primitives for data managing, so that's really uniting data preparation and machine learning. Often in Scrub, we like to have things that are very resource friendly. You saw that I did the um, a demo uh, on my laptop. This wasn't a remote demo. But we can also use powerful things, which I didn't show today. And I also mentioned score. And the reason why I mentioned score is that I think the big picture problem is going to be solved by integration throughout the data science pipeline. If we really want to solve that problem of going from data to impact. Thank you.